Hey guys, it's Mrs. Stewart again. We're going to do a really short video on the Magna Carta. So the Magna Carta was um, written by a group of noblemen who were upset that the king seemed to make up his own rules and not like follow them. So like he was like, you know, the, the old saying, do as I um, say, not as I do. Yeah. That was the king. So he would make up these rules and then they didn't apply to him and the noblemen, it, it upset them. And um, so they created this uh, document called the Magna Carta, which basically established uh, some rules that the king had to follow um, as well as the parliament, uh, which is, if you don't know what a parliament is, it's kind of like a, it's a legislative branch for a monarch monarchy. So um, the very first uh, Magna Carta was established in 1215 and granted by King John. Uh, the Magna Carta though itself has been revised several times and so honestly um, like the, the major revisions were between 1200 and 1400. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the significance of the document. Um, we use a lot of the principles from the Magna Carta uh, today in our constitution. So when we uh, were talking about the principle of rule of law, that came from the Magna Carta. Uh, the Magna Carta established the principle that everyone is subject to the law, even the king. So the king wasn't isn't able to make up these laws and then not follow them himself. Um, it wasn't possible anymore after the Magna Carta. Uh, it also established due process of the law, which we talked about with the Fifth and the 14th Amendment. Remember, the Fifth Amendment made the federal government follow those steps. Think Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. And then the 14th Amendment extended the due process rights to, or to due process clause to the states and the local governments and stated that those two entities had to um, follow the due process uh, clause as well. Um, it also, we see in the Magna Carta, the ideals, some of the ideals behind the due process. Um, so your right to a trial by a jury, uh, your 12 man or woman jury who are going to determine if you are guilty or not. And then a speedy trial. We can't just throw you in jail and leave you there for years and years and years without like officially sentencing you for your crime. Because one, how unfair would that be if you weren't actually guilty? Because that means you could spend seven years in jail waiting for your trial just to find out that you didn't commit the crime. That's not fair. And then two, another reason why um, that's important to have a speedy trial is that um, witnesses, you know, over time, witnesses' memory of events are going to be different than what they would be if we had it immediately. So the outcome of the trial may be different just based off of the witness's testimony. I mean, how, how many of you remember when you wore uh, 10 years ago today? Or well, actually, you won't remember that because you guys would have been like three. So let me rephrase this. How many of you remember what you wore three years ago today? You probably don't, do you? Right? So that's the same thing with witnesses. That's not very fair to make um, or have a trial seven years later where witnesses can't even recall the details of the crime. Um, and it, the Magna Carta gave Englishmen basic rights and freedoms. Um, so we'll look at our freedoms and how some of those freedoms were shaped by the Magna Carta a little bit later. But that is all I have for you for this video. I will see you um, at our next video when we talk about the charters. Have a great day.